June 17th, 2020. I got one block planted last night. I'm going to try and get one more in tonight, although I got a lot going on tonight. Uh, including, uh, if you want to come check it out, I'll be on TFR Live on Quantum Connections at 8 p.m. Eastern Time with Elizabeth McCabe. And we'll be talking about critical points of influence and that sort of stuff. So I hope you'll uh, join us there as well. Um, anyway, uh, eight rows of bodacious sweet corn in. They're supposed to be 75 days to maturity. The uh, next block is going to be incredible sweet corn at 83 days. And then I'll probably do silver queen up here at 90 days. <coughs> and uh, right now, off of the upper ram reservoirs, uh, straight off the reservoirs, no, uh, no pumping, um, irrigating this block to wetten it up enough so that I can get back in here with a tiller and do another cut. So in this system, I use a foot valve. It is a uh, inch and a half brass foot valve, uh, usually used for well pumps. Usually it goes the other way and you pump water up and it would stop water from coming back out of the pump. So your pump would hold its prime. In this case, it's inverted the other way um, and it's made so that well, when it closes, that's what causes the shock wave through the second valve and sends pressure out. working nicely off of gravity. So that's kind of nice. All right, I just decided to man up and do it and get it done. It's in, corn blocks one and two. Bodacious sweet corn over here, it's a hybrid, and incredible hybrid over here, uh, 75 and 83 days respectively. So uh, I'm running off the gravity feed off the reservoir right now, we'll uh, zoom in on that. I can't tell on the camera, I think, yeah, I think we're down to, down one band. Okay, so that means we've dumped the two uh, barrels in the upper part of the barn, and uh, we're down one on that. So we're going through this water pretty quick. Mama and baby chicks are out doing their foraging thing, scratching and pecking, freaking out when I walk by. Right, Mama? July 23rd, just a very brief update. We got some flowers showing up already on the holy basil. Stuff is growing like crazy. Smells and tastes fantastic. Been putting a little bit in with my food every night. Same with the sweet thai and the large leaf. Tomatoes had a heavy feed the other night, <clears throat> two nights ago, I think. Saw an immediate response yesterday. Oh, that was good. Um, so hopefully, uh, Tomatoes will keep cranking and we'll be able to pull off some before the season ends here. Really wish I had gotten these started earlier this year, but it's just been a weird season for me, a weird year. And uh, you can see this soil has been irrigated <coughs> uh, because it's still showing moisture this time of day after the thunderstorm. We'll go down and look at this other strip that I've tilled and haven't gotten back to planting yet. 
and you can see it's significantly drier in here. I mean, you still see a little bit of moisture, but it's pretty powdery. And I don't know if I'm going to get any uh, productive crops in here at this point, so I may just cover crop this with some buckwheat, and that'll give us a honey crop and some soil building and keep our soils covered and moist and keep biology alive. <clears throat> and I don't know what I'm going to do with uh, these old tomato infrastructures. I may pull these down. Down here, I uh, got, finally got back in here. I shaved this off. Uh, I gave it a little bit of irrigation the other night because barely could make a dent in it in three hours of watering. Uh, but I'm trying to moisten it up a bit. I'm going to put some buckwheat in here and some sunflowers. And I might even put a late planting of bodacious sweet corn. I don't know if it'll make it or not, but I guess it's worth a shot. And either way, we'll use it to build soils. Uh, so there's that. And we'll just stop and visit my lady friends quick. Nice, warm, sunny day. Like I said, we had a thunderstorm last night. A little bit of rain that should help boost uh, flowers and nectar production a bit, which should help these guys. I know they've been uh, sort of struggling. I mean, we still have a lot of flowers around here, but things have been so dry, I doubt there's a lot of nectar to grab. So hopefully that will help. We got good uh, activity on the landing boards. Just cranking. Great traffic in and out. the end of its flowering cycle. Pretty soon here, I'm going to come back in here and uh, capture all these for seed. And I'm going to start some new purple cornflower blocks next year. Or maybe even this year. Or probably not till next year. And corn blocks are really taking off nice. The buckwheat is up. Uh, everything had a foliar feed Tuesday night. This is Thursday around noon time. Um, and boy, you can really see the growth response already. That new green third leaf shooting out. It's amazing how fast buckwheat uh, germinates and fills into a plot. <coughs> I'm probably still going to have to come back in here and do a, a weeding in the row right next to the corn just to knock out that last little bit of amaranth that came up with the corn. Uh, but that shouldn't be a big deal. It shouldn't take long. And uh, the corn has the advantage now. <coughs> I'll have to look in my log and see how long it was. I think it was like maybe two weeks, maybe as much as three that I planted the buckwheat behind the corn. I think that's about the appropriate timing. Um, and actually, this was planted, this other curve block was planted even even uh, sooner after corn, and that might even be more appropriate timing. But we'll see as the buckwheat comes in behind the corn uh, whether it ends up being competition for the corn. I hope not. I doubt it. But we'll see. Um, I did plant uh, sunflowers in here also. <coughs> They're hard to spot in amongst all the buckwheat. But I was spot, I spotted them here last night. Yeah, here we are. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's a row of those here, and then on the end of each of these rows, there's one. Some came up, some didn't. I'm sorry. Anyway, the corn is taken off. The buckwheat's taken off. This last planting of corn is starting to take off well. Looking good. Came in here last night after the rain. Well, it wasn't dusty. and did some mowing. Really nice not to be covered in dust while you're mowing. And then uh, these squash are all taken off. These are delicata squash. Putting on their first true leaf set. They were included in that foliar feed. It was nice to see them taken off. Uh, and then this is the, uh, the first plantains of corn. And they're sizing right up and taking off. And the cover crop buckwheat's coming in underneath them. Sunflowers are starting to uh, get some size. Looks like the Japanese beetles are chewing on them a bit. They seem to be hanging in there okay. Anyway, just thought I'd get a, uh, a clip of this. It's looking good. Alright, I think that's it for now. Just a quick update. Thanks for watching, Pharmacy Seeds Network. July 27th, 2020, beautiful 98 degree hot sunny summer day, let the chicks out here late afternoon, do some scratching and pecking and foraging, we'll go take a look at uh, what I've been working on and why you haven't seen too many videos lately. So I got most of the potato row weeded uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, I got maybe a 15 foot section left on the far end there to do. Uh, tomatoes are doing okay. Uh, 
they're really starting to take off into this frame building phase. Uh, so that's exciting and encouraging. I see some flowers starting to come on. Um, my last foliar drench, I included a little bit of Accelerate in that uh, to help support complete trace mineral and hormonal nutritional support for flowering and fruiting and uh, you know all those biological processes that have to happen. I want them to happen at the most accelerated rate and be fully supported. Uh, let's see, over here we have the basils, uh, large leaf, uh, sweet thai, and holy basil. Those are growing at quite a clip, doing really well. I irrigated this a little bit last night, not real heavily, but reasonably well. Just trying to keep it moist in here. I also put down, uh, actually we can see the seeds popping here now, uh, another row of large leaf basil on this side, between the large leaf and the sweet thai. Boom, boom. And another row of sweet thai on this side, between those two. And you can actually see those popping up as well. Nothing doing in this section yet. Uh, just not prepared to irrigate it yet. Uh, so I may just cover crop it with buckwheat or rye or a mix of the two. Or uh, might throw some sunflowers in there. I'm not sure yet. Now, down here, we're cover cropping. This is seeded all to buckwheat. Uh, down the edge is uh, down the edge is a row of bonacious sweet corn. I don't know if that'll make it or not. Uh, when I did the calcs on it, it says it would be done by October 13th. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but I had the extra seed left over, and I usually don't use seed from the previous year for that kind of thing. So I just decided to plant it and use it as a cover crop, and who knows, maybe we'll get a late shot of sweet corn out of it. Uh, that row actually runs all the way up, and then uh, circumvents the rhubarb, and then goes back that way a little bit, because that's how much seed I had. Um, there's also two rows of the big sunflowers that I have uh, from my breeder friends in here. And then uh, down the edge, on that edge, is Hawaiian orange marigold. And down the edge on this edge are those wildflower seed mixes that I got from my friend Bob, KD2RFI. So I, I seeded and drilled this all in, and then I irrigated it heavily the other night. And of course you can't tell today because it's been 97 degrees and sunny the last few days. Now on to the corn blocks, huh? So, the buckwheat is germinated and it's taken off. Uh, it's starting to really fill out a nice canopy and start to protect the soil better. The sunflowers are doing well. Uh, there's a row of those all the way down here. The sweet corn is doing well. Uh, I do have to go back and weed. I don't know if I'll get to that tonight. I'm having trouble getting everything done these days. Uh, and the buckwheat is coming in underneath here, but the amaranth is sort of out-competing it in this case. Uh, so I may have to go back and do some hand weeding just to give the buckwheat the advantage. Because you can see how bad the amaranth has come in. Uh, it wasn't this tall two days ago. Uh, I should mention you'll notice this whole block, all of it, is a much darker green now. Uh, I think it was Tuesday night that I did uh, the foliar feed for this last. And when I did, I added the inoculants that I had forgotten to put in back in the spring. Namely, BioCoat Gold, Biogenesis, and Spectrum Extra. Uh, and I don't think Advanced and Eco Agriculture sells Spectrum Extra anymore, so I would recommend Spectrum DS in place of that. Uh, but this greening up is basically from inoculants. Uh, that's what's really been added to it, and it makes a tremendous difference. And every time I forget and do it, and I come back in a couple of days and I see everything just dark and dark and green and do really well, I remember just how important that biology is. I talk about it all the time, and sometimes I forget to implement it. But uh, this is another excellent reminder of where and how and why biology is so important. The couple squash that popped up that I left uh, are doing okay in there. They're looking pretty happy. And uh, the bodacious sweet corn is just starting to go uh, to flower. We got a little bit of tassel starting to pop on here. And uh, you can see we got uh, our little corn ear embryos popping. And is that one, two, three there you're seeing maybe? Uh, I can tell you it is in other spots because I saw it when I walked by earlier. Yeah. One, two, three ear ears. 
so far. Again, this goes back to nutrition and critical points of influence. One, two, three. 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 <laughs> uh, we'll see how that develops, but uh, that's looking pretty promising. Uh, sunflowers on this side are doing well. I guess in essence the corn blocks are doing well. I just got some weeding to do. And uh, they probably could use some irrigation soon again, but uh, spring supply is low. I actually ran out of water last night just as I finished irrigating the basil and tomatoes and sweet potatoes. So uh, i got to be conservative now. I put a lot of water out in the last few days after I planted uh, that block. I also watered this. Um, and I watered that, which we'll be going to next. But first, let's look at this new curve block corn planting. That's doing really well. Uh, incredible sweet corn on top. Silver Queen back past the halfway divider post. The squash that I planted here in the uh, Coast of Maine soil cups doing well, popping up and, uh, and growing, <coughs> and uh, let's see what else, the buckwheat is obviously doing well in here, and the sweet clover is popping all over in here, I'm pretty sure this is the sweet clover cover crop, so that'll give us a nice biomass builder and a flowering crop next year for honeybees. Um, as well as some soil structuring work and a bunch of other awesome benefits. Oh yeah, I guess I'll step over here and uh, show you the sunflowers. The outside edge row here is all sunflowers. Those are doing well. Uh, much better in here than over in there because I've been watering these more frequently. They really like a lot of water to get going on. Uh, it, at least here in our soil, which is a really dry soil, it drains really well. Um, all right, so let's go look at that other cover crop block that I planted. Okay, here we are over on this block. Um, if you can grow your own mulch and just roll it down, you're good. And uh, from what I've seen, some of the no-till operations rise an excellent crop for that. Uh, it's also alleopathic, so it'll kill out other weeds and plants in there. And then uh, when you get to the right point in, in the life cycle of the plant, you roll it flat, and then you have this nice mat of mulch with no weeds, and you can plant right through it. So that's kind of the long-term goal. All right, I think I've babbled on about farming plenty long enough. I hope you found this interesting or informative. This has been sort of a little bit longer video, but I uh, kind of feel like I needed to do a, a solid update. A lot's been going on, and I haven't really had a chance to catch up on you. Thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network. July 29th, 2020. Well, I did an irrigation pass through this corn block here last night, and uh, it's doing really well. The buckwheat cover crop's coming in good. The sunflowers are doing well. The corn is doing pretty well. I do have a little something chewing on leaves here. Don't know what that is yet. I have to uh, go back and look into that. Never had that issue before. I do still have a little bit more weeding to do in here. But uh, overall, Things are doing pretty good, and you can see this buckwheat is just blowing up. So, uh, so that's good. And we'll go down and take a look at the uh, tasseling corn here in a sec. So I'll just give a shot of this curve block here. That's doing really well, also. Like I said, we have a little less, a little less weed pressure in here, so. Uh, that buckwheat really got a chance to uh, take dominance pretty quickly and uh, looks like planting those so close together wasn't bad I think I came through maybe three or four days after germination and uh, seeded and drilled this to buckwheat I also planted the sunflowers at the same time um, and they're doing well also I came through last night and gave them an extra dose of uh, foliar feed drench uh, I gave the sunflowers and the squash both an extra hit. 
a little bit higher nutrient demand and uh, we are getting late in the season I want to make sure they get that uh, early growth to happen fast and get established and uh, get out so we can make productivity before we get into uh, cold weather and slow growth obviously I irrigated in here as well last night uh, that's doing well uh, uh, my friend Ted had given me a uh, one of those like strip sprinklers like you see people use in their yard all the time and uh, I had set it aside because it doesn't work well with low pressure and I, everything I was messing with was low pressure off of the uh, reservoir system up in the barn but um, lately I've been irrigating with the foliar pump and uh, I decided to try this uh, try this sprinkler again with high pressure dancing waters is the name of this and if you can get one of these what an awesome sprinkler does a block about 36 feet long and about 25 feet wide very evenly very uniformly and uh, you see the barrel here in the crate uh, the reason those are here is because I had the crate on top of the barrel last night to set this high enough to keep the coverage that it produces because uh, otherwise the sprinkler will hit the corn and it will interfere and reduce the coverage area dramatically. So uh, that works out really well. That means three passes with that sprinkler does this 100 foot by 25 foot block, um, which is excellent. Uh, other stuff I wanted to show, uh, mainly I got the camera out just to show this corn is basically in tassel now and in flower. Uh, this has only been a couple of days and it's just blown up uh, with the foliar feed it had. And then of course the irrigation last night. Yeah, look at that pollen falling off. Isn't that totally beautiful. impressed with it but not totally unimpressed as of yet. It's an heirloom. Uh, and then this last planting is bodacious again. And then the two over there are incredible on the top and Silver Queen on the bottom. So I uh, just thought I'd do a quick update on the sweet corn plantings and the cover cropping here. Uh, things are doing well. I guess we'll take a quick look over here because I know we have germination here of the buckwheat. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Uh, I've irrigated this one more time since uh, since I planted it uh, two nights ago and then last night we had uh, boy if you could even call it a shower it was just enough to moisten the top of the soil but actually that works out well uh, with such a shallow seeded uh, set of cover crops that's just enough to keep that soil moist and help aid that germination and I think that spawned on this last uh, pop out that made the, uh, the buckwheat really pop out I don't see any rye up here yeah, yet. I got my seeding fairly accurate. So just looking at this last cover crop block. The buckwheat is germinating here as well. Very encouraging. And also that last plant obligation sweet corn is up. So that's also encouraging. Um, in order to give that the best opportunity at producing corn this year, I probably will go back with the watering can tonight and just hit this row with a drench of uh, forage foliar and maybe throw a little sea shield in there as a the little extra booster. But uh, exciting to see the cover crops coming in quickly and uh, rolling along through the season. Uh, I think we're going to let this flower out this year and then behind this we're going to put rye. Um, and then we'll roll rye down as a mat and then plant through that next year. So we'll have our mulch in place and we'll have our soil and our cropping area produce the mulch that it needs. And then it'll be building its own soil, protecting the soil with its own mulch and then riding that mulch back down to build the next soil layer. And we'll uh, successfully plant again next year with rye at the end of the season uh, if that works out as I think it will. And that'll give us... Uh, very nice cover cropping system, uh, no till, uh, plus you get the allopathic or the, uh, the uh, weed killing effect of the rye. So uh, you get soil mass building, you get uh, weed protection, you get mulch production, and uh, you get winter cover of the soil. So you're constantly photosynthesizing, that, photosynthesizing on that soil as much of the season as you can be. And that's what you really want. That's how you build massive amounts of carbon sequestered in the soil. That's how we save the planet, we save our health, and we build healthy, healthier soils all in one shot. All right, I've babbled long enough for now, I think. Thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network.